After I've read a show, one of the first things I do is research images. So I scour the internet and find out what's the environment of our play. And I find kids and kids in chairs and tables and big banners talking about a spelling bee and more kids in chairs. And the lights, some of them have lights and some of them are bland and boring. Some of them are more cute. Some have the students in the audience, but most of all these cute kids. This one had a lighted curtain behind it, and that made it more interesting. And then I started looking at other events, science fairs and presentations and other kinds of product unveilings. Here's a big seminar. So I'm seeing all these multiple signs and banners and interesting video screens and trusses and different kinds of projections. And this one caught my eye with the clean lighted panels and columns, but lots of projection screens in different patterns. And this one with a huge projection screen. And we could start with a blank bare stage empty and fill it up as part of the pre-show, having the crew come out before the show and set things up, the chairs and the microphones and all of the elements that we need for the show. So by the time we start, we've got kids in chairs and are starting the spelling bee. Color, and then we bring in color for the songs to create the other world feeling very different than the spelling bee work light kind of atmosphere that we take them in the kids' heads or in the fantasies, and that's all done through vibrant color and pattern and interesting. So we go from this work light kind of feeling to this brilliant color feeling. And that's an interesting look with the orchestra on the stage, adding a vibrancy to the songs. Uh, but I think the color and the patterns and textures create a, a very different environment. But it doesn't have to be projection screens, it could just be screens of color or patterns of color and light, squares or different shapes. Uh, different uh, colored backgrounds, doesn't have to be projections. So this kind of look was interesting, the color and the vibrancy and the electric kind of feeling to it. Creating more than just a bare stage kind of feeling. The different shapes of these screens caught my eye. Another thought is we could oversize everything, make, uh, make the students seem like they're small children by oversizing the furniture and the tables and, and the environment. I saw these glowing orbs of tents, these lighted, kind of interior glowing objects that caught my eye, the different shapes and sizes and how they created a, a striking image. And what if, if you, we did, we could do glowing geometric shapes or glowing columns of light to give interest in electricity. For pandemonium, we could drop streamers and things from the sky to create this kind of chaotic environment that then disappears to continue the rest of the show as if nothing happened. These trusses kept catching my eye. Not just the color, but the kind of silver trusses in the corners and on the edges and how they're creating a visual element with these trusses. The color and the glowing panels, What if we, instead of having the orchestra in front of the stage, what if we did in fact have the orchestra on stage? Can we incorporate that into the visual elements of the show? And how we light the orchestra becomes a visual element. 
So instead of a typical gymnasium type feeling for the spelling bee, we do this whole theatrical version of the auditorium. And what if we did a huge projection screen of the singer or the person who's talking at the time? And the colors would be bright pinks and kid colors and cotton candy colors and Easter egg kind of bright, colorful pinks and kid colors. And as we do banners, we could do a normal size banner uh, like typical of the show or we could take that same idea and oversize it completely overwhelming. I don't normally do this as part of my normal design process but with this, when I discuss this with the students we'll talk about other shows and look at and critique and get ideas from other shows. But one of the things I see is they're all gymnasiums and I, can, I think we can do something different and something fun not being in a gymnasium. Uh, I like the playfulness that some of the other ones do. Uh, again, some of them are oversizing. They're having these odd shapes or angles, which is, which is interesting and intriguing. Some of them use windows for colored panels, backgrounds, and to be able to light them as a sight back behind. Some of them focused on the signs and banners elements. And we'll discuss some of these others in class. And I like the colors of these quite a bit, these last three, and the theatricality of, of these versions. So what might we do with our version? Well, we'd start with the stage and trying to keep it fairly bland and fairly, fairly boring at the beginning. But we keep the beginning fairly simple. And then when the time comes, we'd open up the curtain and the orchestra would be on stage, upstage behind the singers. And you can see if we do some sort of colored panels behind them, it creates a more vibrant and dynamic stage full of energy. We could do some sort of uh, columns and combination of screens I like the idea of the follow spots on stage. We could have the entire chorus on stage in the chairs upstage with numbers and tags around their neck as if they were contestants from the earlier version. I thought about having the table down in the audience but thought some of the interaction between them required them to be on stage. We could do benches or risers instead of chairs. We could get bring in bleachers or platforms. We could do billboards and advertisements of our local businesses there in Big Rapids. I'd like to talk about the beginning of the show and how it's set up and how it's written seems a slightly unclear to me and I think we could uh, make it a little cleaner in the beginning. And how much room do we need for choreography? Let's talk about that. And these are just some quick thumbnail sketches in order to get us talking. <laughs> 